Uh, thank you, Remy, for the introduction. Uh, so I'm going to present the system boundaries of this uh, presentation. So first, I will uh, introduce the components of the net uh, effect on climate uh, of the problems. Uh, so the net CO2 fluxes is a um, uh, result from uh, the photosynthesis and the ecosystem respiration. And to calculate the carbon by depth, we sum the uh, carbon input uh, through uh, organic manner and the net CO2 fluxes uh, plus the carbon output uh, at harvest. To calculate the greenhouse gas budget that represents uh, the biochemical bio effects, we add to the carbon budget the other emissions uh, uh, associated to field operation and, and to emissions. Land management causes uh, a, a variation in surface albedo. Uh, for example, when the albedo uh, increased, it's uh, equivalent to a carbon sink, uh, like after seeding. And at the opposite, when the albedo decreases, it's equivalent to a carbon source. Uh, that has consequences on the repartition of the, uh, the energy uh, between the different fluxes, and we will study later uh, the consequence on the latent and the sensible heat flux, but also on the long wave radiation. Um, first, uh, first studies comparing biogeochemical and biogeophysical effects were on forest uh, ecosystems. And for croplands during many decades, uh, studies were either focused on the soil carbon storage and the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions for climate mitigation, or the effect of management practices and biogeophysical effects that were caused by changes in cropland management. And so to compare biogeochemical effects with the albedo radiative forcing caused by crop and management changes, the latter, the latter had to be converted into CO2 equivalent, but uh, stabilized methodologies do no, do, to do so were missing. In uh, recent years, methodological advances allowing to convert this albedo effect in CO2 equivalent raised awareness of the potential significative effects of the albedo radiative forcing on climate mitigation. So as a consequence, recent studies show that some uh, management changes in albedo radiative forcing had impacts of uh, the same order of magnitude than biogeochemical effects. So in this presentation, I will first analyze the causes of surface albedo dynamics on, on cropland in order to identify land management changes that could contribute to climate mitigation through both CDR and SRM approaches. Then we will compare short-term and long-term biogeophysical physical and chemical effects of some management changes at a larger scale to determine their direct and indirect effects on the net radiative forcing. So at uh, the beginning, uh, I studied, I analyzed the cause of fast uh, uh, surface albedo changes uh, on uh, two uh, uh, sites close to Toulouse at Oradé um, and La Masquerre. And we also calculated the radiative, albedo radiative forcing associated to those variation of albedo. And we applied uh, this methodology to uh, a few uh, European uh, ICOS sites. Uh, so uh, we use those conclusions to test uh, one uh, of the potential levers uh, by uh, realizing a um, campaign at La Masquerre uh, to determine the, the, uh, the net effect of uh, biogeochemical and biogeophysical uh, effects. Uh, then we compare uh, two cropping systems uh, on another site uh, at Gaillac. And finally, Eric will present a review of a few studies that use uh, satellite data or, or modeling, and uh, we'll conclude on the consequences on crop and management changes on biogeochemical and biogeophysical components of the net radiative forcing. So what do local scale studies teach us? First, I calculated the, uh, uh, to, to analyze the dynamics of surface albedo, I calculate daily weighting average albedo by using half hourly measured albedo, but I weighted by incident solar radiation. To calculate my radiative forcing, I did the project of the uh, three terms, uh, the incident solar radiation, the atmospheric transmittance, and the difference in albedo between the mean daily value and the albedo of Bersol. We choose a Bersol albedo in dynamics as a reference for problems. Then the annual radiative forcing was calculating over a whole cropping year by using the dynamics of the each three terms present on the previous equation. If the albedo radiative forcing was negative, it was equivalent to a carbon sink. And at the, at the opposite, when it was positive, it was equivalent to a carbon source. Then uh, we did a conversion in CO2 equivalent uh, based on the urban fraction method. 
So uh, those are the, um, this figure present the albedo uh, daily at Oradé and uh, La Masquer in Down uh, between 2005 to 2010. And at uh, both sides, we can see that uh, the, uh, the albedo of Berceau represented in black dot on the two uh, figures is always lower than residue uh, regrowth of the crops uh, albedo. We can see also that it's very noisy because uh, of the humidity of the soil uh, at the surface. Um, also, we can see that uh, winter crops uh, like winter wheat and uh, rapeseed had uh, higher albedo than summer crops. Um, so in general, surface albedo increases with the green plant area index, but the response uh, is uh, really crop dependent. For example, for wheat and wheat uh, in green and for rapeseed in blue, it reaches its, its maximum at the PIE max. For maize in red, the albedo response to PIE is less pronounced. And finally, for sunflower in orange, the albedo occurred, uh, the maximum albedo occurred before the PIE max. So we study uh, the, the crop penology effect on the surface albedo, uh, and we clearly see uh, nesteresis for the winter wheat and for the rapeseed, meaning that uh, for a same PIE, PIE, uh, PIE value, uh, the albedo uh, is higher during the growing season than uh, compared to the senescence because uh, there is a more uh, structure that uh, trap the energy. For sunflower and maize, we can see uh, clearly this hysteresis, and then it's also flat for the maize. We compare uh, this, um, this value to the albedo maize of other sites, and we see that uh, there is an albedo dynamic that differ according to crop species. Uh, it's flat for the maize and very uh, noisy for the mustard, but for the winter wheat, we cl clearly see an increase in the albedo until the PI max, and then a decrease. And this is probably due to the plant uh, architecture. Then we calculate the albedo radiative forcing. Uh, the negative values is equivalent to a carbon scene, so a cooling effect. We can see that for during the crop development, but also during the crop residues and the spontaneous free growth, the, the values are negative. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, but during their soil uh, before maize, so the, the values are positive uh, because uh, the plot was irrigated. So uh, we conclude that the soil coverage may contribute to a cooling albedo effect. And when we, when we studied the European ICOS site, we did the same observation at the other sites. Now, uh, then we compared uh, biogeophysical effects between two cropping years uh, in Gaillac in France. Uh, the biogeophysical components were measured on the two uh, subplot. The red one is the conducted in agroecology since five years and it is represented by uh, red dots. And the other one is in transition from conventional to uh, agroecology practices and is represented in blue. We can see that the albedo of agroecology subplot is always equal or higher than uh, the one in transition, uh, in spite of a higher uh, topsoil organic con matter content because the soil was permanently covered by vegetation or crop residues. We also contrarily observe an increase in long radiation that overran the albedo effect at uh, the agroecology site during summer at the beginning of the development uh, of the cover crop. Then uh, we did a comparative in situ analysis of, the, of all the components of the net radiative forcing. So to do so, we divided the parcel, uh, the plot at La uh, in two subplots. One was seeding with uh, uh, mustard, and was was uh, one. The other one was maintained in uh, bare soil uh, from September to the beginning um, of December. Uh, on those uh, two subplots, we measured fluxes, so CO2 and two water and energy. We measured temperature, humidity, and soil heat fluxes. And finally, we measured solar incident and reflected radiation, both in short and low wave. Uh, in long wave. So the objectives of uh, this campaign uh, was to quantify the difference in surface albedo and the radiative forcing induced by the cover crop, but also the effect of the cover crop on the surface infrared radiation and soil temperature, sensible and latent heat fluxes, and finally on carbon and greenhouse gas budget. We could see that uh, on the subplot uh, with mustard, the albedo uh, was higher than the, on the bare soil subplot. That induced a negative radiative forcing uh, equivalent to a carbon sink, so a cooling effect. 
concerning the long wave, uh, we can see that uh, in red dots, uh, the effect was also negative. So uh, uh, it was a cooling effect. And uh, this effect was equivalent to the albedo radiative forcing in terms of intensity. Finally, uh, we measured a mean difference of 2.5 degrees uh, between the subplot mustard and the uh, bare soil that could have uh, as a uh, like consequence to slow down in uh, the organic matter mineraliz mineralization and had consequences on soil CO2 and to all fluxes. Um, then uh, during the mustard development, uh, the evapotranspiration, so this is the Latin heat flux, uh, increase with the development of the mustard and the sensible uh, heat flux decrease that causes a local surface climate cooling. And on the bare soil subplot, it was uh, the opposite. So uh, evapotranspiration decrease uh, while uh, uh, heat fluxes increase. This effect uh, is very difficult to express in terms uh, of, uh, of radiative forcing, especially at local scale. So for summarizing, uh, the cover crop uh, had a benefic effect on climate by cooling, uh, by increasing surface albedo, uh, increasing evapotranspiration, uh, and um, decreasing uh, long wave radiation, but also sensible heat flux. The global effect on climate of uh, the cover crop is uh, difficult to estimate uh, because it requires couple and surface atmospheric modeling exercises, but the local or regional effect on perceived temperature at the surface could be significant. I will finish my part of the presentation with the, the all components of the greenhouse gas uh, budget. Uh, they are all represented on the upper uh, figure and are all um, expressed in grams CO2 equivalent per square meters. Um, we can, uh, the mustard is in green and the bare soil subplot is uh, in orange. And uh, we can see that uh, the must, mustard um, lead to uh, supplementary uh, storage uh, equivalent to uh, 50 uh, gram carbon. Uh, the differences uh, between uh, carbon here and greenhouse gas budgets were mainly caused by the carbon uh, storage, uh, storage effect uh, additional. Uh, in spite of the low uh, cover crop biomass production this year, that was around 2.2 uh, ton dry mass per hectare, uh, compared to the mean regional figures, that is uh, around 4 ton dry mass per hectare. The increase uh, in N2O emissions and uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, associated to field operation were negligible. Uh, and uh, and then we compare uh, these components to the albedo radiative forcing, but uh, this albedo radiative forcing converted into a two equivalent was calculated considering that the cover crop would be maintained over the next uh, 100 years. Uh, so we had a very low uh, value of uh, albedo radiative forcing because the cover crop the crop uh, was grown in late fall uh, with uh, low uh, uh, atmospheric transmittance and global radiation, and also it was destroyed in uh, early December. This effect would have been close to 10 times uh, larger if the cover crop uh, had been grown until uh, spring, like uh, it was done uh, in, uh, in Gaillac. So finally, uh, is it really appropriate to compare the uh, albedo radiative forcing in CO2 equivalent with the carbon and the greenhouse gas budget components? And this question will be discussed at the end of the presentation. And uh, you can also have a look at Ryan's presentation for more details. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thanks Morgan. So um, now we will uh, move to the next part of the presentation. And, uh, and uh, we'll try to see what do studies at larger special enterprise scales uh, teach us. So first, uh, concerning carbon storage effects of the cover crop uh, in time, uh, we see that um, it, this is illustrated by uh, uh, those three studies uh, in the bottom, the one from Poplo and Don, Tribuiwa, Tal, and Lugato. Uh, based on the different uh, approaches, uh, different uh, models, OTSI uh, for Poplu and Don, uh, then uh, uh, sticks uh, for simulations in France, and uh, the descent model. And there are also some uh, some uh, meta analyses in the in the paper by Poplu and Don. And um, what you uh, we can see from uh, from those studies is that uh, 
uh, at first, after a cover crop introduction, there is a relatively strong uh, in, uh, carbon storage effect, which is linear for the for the first years. Uh, but then uh, there is some kind of uh, the, the carbon storage effect slows down, and uh, and the soil uh, reaches uh, a new uh, equilibrium. Uh, uh, on the, um, the Rigato paper, uh, you can have a look. At it. it is represented by the the red curve. Um, now, uh, concerning uh, the, the greenhouse gases uh, emissions and first the, the N two O ones, uh, what you can see in the in the Tribua et al uh, paper is that there is um, uh, uh, an increase uh, in the, the N two O emissions after uh, twenty years, uh, which is rather linear, but which is also quite viable among the sites. And uh, in the paper by uh, by uh, Lugato uh, on the opposite. Um, the, at first, you see some decrease in the N2 emissions compared to the baseline scenario uh, because there was some uh, adaptation of the fertilization uh, after, uh, following cover crop um, destruction. Uh, but after uh, like 40 years, uh, the N2 emissions start to increase uh, again uh, and, uh, and they become uh, uh, higher than the, in the baseline scenario. Um, Concerning the, the, the paper, uh, the study uh, held in Spain by uh, Guardia et al, um, you have to look at the, at the gray uh, bars that include both N2 and methane emissions, in fact. Uh, but you see that uh, uh, there is a slight increase when uh, barley is grown uh, uh, compared to, to fallow, uh, while there is a, a, some decrease in N2 emissions following vetch, because uh, in this case, there were some uh, um, integrated soil fertility management uh, methods that were applied uh, that allowed to, uh, to maintain low N2 emissions. And um, so uh, uh, there are different, different methods for integrated soil fertility management, like Merci at the method, for instance, in France, that could allow maintaining low N2 emissions um, Growing color crops. Um, now, looking at the, the, the greenhouse gas budget in the papers by Tribuio et al. and Lugato uh, et al. Um, here, what you uh, so in, in, in uh, Tribuio et al. You, the greenhouse gas uh, budget here represents the, the CO2 emissions and N2 emissions. And you see that there is a net. Uh, uh, equivalent CO2 sink uh, at those different sites. And uh, when uh, uh, adding the red and the orange uh, curves on the, on the figure on the right, you see also that uh, the, the, the greenhouse gas budget corresponds to a, a negative uh, uh, emissions, so um, some, some cooling effect. Um, in, uh, in the paper by uh, Guardia, uh, you can notice that the, the emissions uh, associated, uh, the greenhouse gas emissions, direct and indirect ones, associated to uh, and fertilizer, farm operations, irrigation, for instance, are relatively high, and they are higher than the carbon storage effect. Uh, and uh, and uh, even if the greenhouse gas budget, the, the white uh, diamond uh, dots um, are uh, reduced compared to the fallow treatment, uh, they are still uh, uh, positive. Uh, and even by considering uh, the, the, it's because the carbon storage couldn't compensate the, the emissions. And uh, even by considering the albedo effect, uh, the, those uh, cover crop treatments uh, cannot switch the plot from a source to, uh, to uh, an, an equivalent CO2 sink. So dealing with the albedo, uh, in the paper uh, we published in 2018, uh, we um, we used some uh, ecoclimate land maps uh, to and uh, and also some uh, uh, MODIS uh, course re resolution data that were disaggregate, disaggregated to produce some uh, uh, daily dynamics of uh, vegetation uh, index, uh, bare soil and uh, vegetation uh, albedo, snow free. Um, in order to, uh, to, to be able to calculate uh, the albedo of a C3, uh, C4 crop rotation. Um, from those data, we could analyze where and when the crops could be uh, introduced. And we uh, modified the albedo dynamics by uh, simulating the introduction of cover crop uh, accordingly. 
From there, we, uh, we produce some uh, uh, maps of uh, daily albedo increase uh, with, uh, with crop crops. Uh, and uh, and these, uh, those, uh, those data were uh, used uh, uh, as input for the um, uh, model, uh, the RFCC model, uh, that uses also uh, climatic data concerning daily global radiation and atmospheric transmittance. Um, the results are some maps at the five kilometer resolution of the um, uh, albedo effect uh, over Europe. And you see that uh, there are some um, special uh, heterogeneities with a strong cooling effect uh, in Northern France and in Romania, for instance, and other areas uh, like Spain that are close to zero or even uh, have, could have positive uh, radiative forcing. When we, uh, we convert uh, those results in the watt per square meter and CO2 equivalent based on the urban uh, constant uh, urban fraction method, sorry, or on the GWP method. Uh, and uh, we aggregate the, those results at the national level. We see on the first scenario that corresponded to three months duration of cover crop that uh, France, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, and uh, Germany had the highest potential for mitigation through this effect. Um, this effect was uh, uh, reduced by um, close to 30% uh, uh, when accounting for rain limitation. But when uh, increasing the duration of the cover crop to six months, uh, the, the compensation effect uh, would increase by 25%, uh, corresponding to uh, a compensation of the EU um, uh, agricultural greenhouse gases emission of about one uh, percent. So in general, the, the the cover crops increase the surface albedo compared to bare soil. Here, the snow effects were not accounted for, but for some uh, uh, for some soil types like uh, calcy soil, the, in yellow on the map in the on the right, uh, you see that uh, the, the soil, bare soil albedo is already quite high, which means that if you um, add cover crops, you would have low cooling effect or even some warming effect. At the opposite, on the soils like chernozem that are re really dark because they are rich in the uh, organic carbon uh, matter, uh, the cover crops could have a, a quite strong uh, cooling effect. So that shows us that remote sensing uh, can be very useful to identify where and when cover crops could to be introduced or not, in order to increase the, 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 the radiative effect at national scale. Uh, and, uh, and of course, this analysis will be even better with the high resolution uh, remote sensing products uh, and uh, as uh, um, Jean-Louis uh, showed yesterday, we are currently working on that. Uh, but uh, in our study, uh, we did not account for snow and uh, Kay and Kemada show that uh, uh, considering a snow effect uh, plus cover crop uh, or not uh, would, could uh, lead to uh, changes in surface albedo from minus 3% to plus 20%. So in this, in this very nice paper by uh, Lugato, uh, uh, they have tested um, the, the effect of cover crop considering uh, snow or not uh, on the upper figures. Uh, and they also tested uh, the, the, the effect of some uh, mutant, uh, chlorophyll uh, uh, deficiency mutant uh, cover crops uh, that could uh, increase the, the, the stand albedo. What you can see is that on the upper figures is that the, the albedo effect, uh, snow-free, uh, is, uh, is significant, but is lower than the carbon storage effect. But when you consider uh, snow uh, also uh, in the process, then it reduces this potential. And there are even some areas like in yellow on the, on the B uh, figure uh, that, that could lead to a positive radiative forcing. Uh, now considering uh, uh, some mutant uh, cover crop, uh, uh, see that the, radiative, the albedo radiative forcing uh, can be much stronger and uh, overwhelms the carbon storage effect. So it is. Uh, quite interesting because it shows that there are possible enhancement of the cover crop albedo effect through the choice of the cover crop species and through varietal selection. And next talk, we talk more about that. However, none of the studies did account for the soil darkening effect following uh, um, carbon storage. So uh, we developed uh, a rather simple methodology based on, the, on an equation that represents the, the 
carbon accumulation in the soil using the same uh, carbon dynamics as in Kibuya et al, and considering a maximum uh, carbon content uh, similar to the Romanian soils. And uh, that allowed us to model the bare soil albedo decrease, taking into account the progressive incorporation of uh, organic matter. Here is an example for Spain. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we considered that the, the carbon uh, was uh, homogeneous carbon storage uh, over the whole profile, when in reality, of course, it, it would accumulate, accumulate first in the top soil. So by applying the same method as in uh, the previous uh, paper, uh, but uh, over uh, 100 years uh, using current climate and considering only 80% uh, of the soil darkening uh, effect uh, and maximizing the soil coverage with cover crop as uh, we did in the, in the four, four, four per mil uh, national expertise, we see that, uh, um, sorry, we see that uh, uh, the soil, if at first uh, there is a, a negative radiative forcing when introducing the cover crops, as the soil is still visible between the crops or, uh, and the cover crop or when the vegetation is little developed, progressively the soil darkening effect causes uh, a positive radiating forcing. Uh, um, when we look at the, the response for the, for the different countries, uh, you see that for Malta, Spain and, and Cyprus, uh, the, the, the value are quite high, so we may, might have overestimated the soil carbon storage effect and the, and the decrease in albedo at the sites, uh, so we'll have to in investigate more this, uh, this point. But what you have to, well, the, the key message is that on the short term, soil uh, coverage by cover crops lead to negative quality forcing, but on the longer term, soil darkening effects may predominate over the, the vegetation uh, effect of the cover crop. So uh, that, that, that would mean that once the cover crop are ad adopted, the soil should be covered permanently to avoid this drawback. As we show, uh, we saw it in the, in the GAIAC site, that this can be achieved in fact by, by different means. Um, I will go fast on this one because um, uh, it, it was uh, the results of this study were presented already uh, yesterday. But uh, one way to cover the soil is by maintaining crop residues uh, at the surface uh, following uh, harvest. Uh, that uh, can allow to, uh, to decrease air temperature uh, during summer heat waves by up to uh, two degrees. However, most of the albedo cooling effect is lost because um, uh, the, the energy partition changes, uh, it reduces uh, evapotranspiration and uh, increases uh, surface temperature and, uh, and uh, sensibility flux. So uh, when it's possible, better cover the soil with cover crops, but in areas where cover crops cannot be grown, during the fallow period, when it's too dry, too cold, or in the interval between a, a, a crop and a cover crop, maintaining crop residues at the soil surface is to be encouraged because it avoids soil darkening effect. So uh, a few uh, discussion elements. Uh, so I won't talk about uh, other ecosystem services provided by cover crops, uh, nor the trade-offs and, uh, and the drawbacks. Uh, it has been addressed in, uh, in other papers. But what we have to keep in mind is that there are still many things to investigate, like what is the potential increase in the albedo cooling effect through the, the choice of the crop, crop species in the, in, the, in the rotation and through the varietal selection. Uh, what are the, the true effects of snow and cover crops? We need more realistic uh, approaches, accounting, uh, for instance, for uh, plant architecture, uh, snow height. Uh, what are the cover crop effects on um, soil temperature and uh, humidity? Uh, and what are the consequences for, uh, in terms of CO2 and uh, N2 emissions? What are the consequences also of cover crops on soil water retention and water resources for the falling cash crop? There were a few papers about that uh, from, uh, uh, from um, Julie Constantin, for instance. And, uh, and uh, finally, what is uh, the durability of the carbon stored in the, in the soil belt cover crops? The, this question was raised already uh, a couple of times yesterday. So apart from the cover crop and no-till uh, practices, what are, of course, the biological effects of other crop plant management changes? Uh, there were some papers concerning Birsha uh, application, but what about agroforestry that may allow to store carbon that probably uh, decrease surface albedo? Um, and, uh, and also, what is the net climatic effect of cover crops in the end? And it is very difficult to answer that now because uh, in short, uh, we heard it yesterday, uh, 
albedo effects are local effects and uh, and uh, it's difficult then to compare them to, uh, to changes in the greenhouse gas uh, emissions or carbon storage effects. Uh, so it, it, it would be better to, uh, to consider the albedo effects in CO2 equivalent as an indicator of the intensity and location of those effects rather, rather than uh, absolute uh, values. And, uh, and last spot that is very important is that the current Earth system models, they do not have the sufficiently fine spatial resolution and detail management schemes to represent local practices in realistic way that makes the overall uh, cover crop effect difficult to, uh, to quantify by now. And just to remind you that uh, most uh, IPCC models, they only have two uh, crop uh, plant functional types for cropland. And I think that none of them uh, simulate the cover crop effects for the moment. So um, uh, to conclude, uh, we saw that uh, uh, we analyzed the causes of fast albedo changes for cropland at a range of cropland sites over Europe, and we could identify solutions for climate mitigation through uh, solar radiation management approaches. Uh, in several studies, the cover crop appear as the perfect, uh, as a perfect, no, as a good solution for climate mitigation, uh, as synergies between uh, carbon storage effects, radiative effects, change in energy partitioning uh, are observed. And they provide many other ecosystem services at an acceptable cost for the farmers, especially uh, if there are cap subsidies and the carbon the market develops. Uh, also, uh, additional N2 emissions by, caused by the cover crops could be um, uh, limited through a, 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 um, a better fertilization management. Uh, however, uh, once the cover crop are introduced, uh, it's better to uh, cover the soil permanently to, uh, to avoid the darkening effect. Um, but yet the net mitigation effect of the cover crop is unknown and uh, it should be addressed through a coupled surface atmosphere modeling exercise at global scale. And at this point, it's not possible to do uh, such exercises. Uh, yeah. So key messages, I leave them there. So uh, we have more time for the, for the question later. Thanks a lot.